And again, I want to know whether you personally, not whether you think that, oh, well, okay, Arla said it is fine, whether you actually think that that is fair. Well, first and foremost, the apostasy situation doesn't occur in the Quran. It occurs in the prophetic traditions, also known as hadiths, narrations, attribute to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And there's a whole science behind hadith, if they're sound, they're valid, if they're weak, based on historicity. That's a long discussion. However, to cut a long story short, there's about three or four opinions with regards to apostasy because in Islam, we don't take one statement and run away with it. We take the whole corpus of material and we make a valid judgment. So there's a few opinions. The first opinion is that apostate, if he becomes a political apostate and he fights against the Muslims, then that's described as punishable by death. Another apostasy is, for instance, when well, they I, just... I, I can pause you there. I can yeah. pause you there for this reason. Uh, if, if the penalty for the other two is some, somewhat different, it really doesn't matter. Do you think that the penalty for the one that you have described, do you personally think said? that that is fair? Well, yeah, if someone's going to fight against the community, yeah, they should be... Uh, they should be stoned to death, yes? No, that's, that's, not, that's not the punishment. What is the punishment? Uh, from my understanding, it may be limited, it's actually a beheading. Beheading. And you you're, you're comfortable with that? Well, you don't feel any pain with it. That's the first thing. Okay. You're, and you're, and there's no purpose before it. Wait, Owen. Wait, Owen. I just want to make sure. Yeah. You're, you're saying that beheading is acceptable, you think it is fair, and you're justifying it, amongst other things, on the basis that the person doesn't feel any pain. No, 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 no. I'm not justifying it at all like that. What I'm saying is, if someone, for example, in Britain we have laws, well, we did have treason laws. In America we have similar laws. And the law is, if you basically commit treason, you, get, you could be liable to death. Uh, yes, and I we, we, the last person to be hung in uh, or suffer capital punishment in this country uh, was, I think, 1954 or maybe 1956. Yes, we yes. like to and think that we have progressed from that stage. America yeah, we still yet, have the death Jeff, penalty in the United I just want to States. know that you're suggesting... That, oh, no, I'm not even suggesting. I just want to know your personal view that you actually think that beheading someone for apostasy is acceptable and fair. Your views. Yeah, my view is if someone fights against a particular community, then they have, that danger to that community has to be ceased. Even if they're not a danger, even if they're right, it doesn't matter. They, they went against the, the numbers majority rules, you get killed because no. we can't come up with a more simple way saying, of doing it. I'm saying that, that if they fight against the community physically. I, the thing that I'm struggling with, that there are other methods of conflict resolution other than cutting people's heads off. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, so, you, you mentioned before uh, about the Hadith and the varying degrees of uh, perceived authenticity. I appreciate that, Aaron, yeah, but I'm saying, when I mean fighting, I mean actually killing someone. No, 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 you are not. And do not try and use that defense because oh, I, this I program is being recorded and it will be posted. And people at don't, this, don't very, forget, moment, Hamza, at this very moment can go back and re, re listen to what you just said. On I did two say specific, I said if they fight, ah, specific, specific okay. issues. Yeah, I'm being specific. Yeah, go death on. penalty for apostasy, death penalty for blasphemy, right? Yeah, but if, what if does Islam mean? promotes? I see. Islam condones a death penalty for both of those crimes, right? Yeah, yes, it does. Yes. Okay, there we go. Neither is justified oh. because if somebody figures out. Some but what do you mean by apostasy? That's the point. If okay. one of the you opinions of the tradition no longer, is that apostasy you know, is uh, when you not only leave the tradition, but then you start physically fighting the tradition. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. Wait, I, I'm wait, sorry, wait. but the, the histories tell a different story. Abu Bakr didn't wait for the other tribes uh, before he started the Riddah conflicts to wage war against him. He preemptively attacked them. That's because they weren't paying the taxes. So wait, you, well then why didn't you attend your statement by saying fighting against them or not well, paying a mandatory tax that okay. they've arbitrarily... Let me, let me clarify the question again. Apostasy without violence. Does Islam permit that a non-violent apostate could be killed simply for being a non-violent apostate? Some interpretations have that view. So it is possible that, that Islam does condone a death penalty for a non-violent apostate. Yes, there is an interpretation. Okay. 
And that uh, what about what about blasphemy? Oh, uh, geez, hold uh, on, hold uh, on. Uh, I'm getting to uh, that. Uh, let Aaron so, right. Aaron, carry on. So when someone figures out different information, they are not permitted to believe what the evidence implies to them. They are no. not permitted to believe outside of the limited scope of interpretation under that's, pain of that's, death. That's what and you true. don't recognize this as being the, the, the core tenets of a lie. There's 20 conditions to apostasy. One of the conditions include, if they have a question, it must be answered. If there's debate and dialogue, if someone has an inter is an intellectual apostate, they must be debated and have a dialogue with. We saw this in Baghdad, where atheists used to debate the Muslims in Baghdad, okay? So the point is, we really need to understand Sharia law or not, because in, frank, in fairness, guys, let me tell you something. In fairness, you may disagree with the output and the product and the fruit of it, but there's a whole discussion involved. Classical scholars discussed who is an apostate, what are the conditions. If he's intellectual, for example, we need to have a discussion. If he always has a question, then he, he's not touched, for instance. yeah. So there are nuances to this discussion. Uh, not, not really. If, really. if you, you really want to bring up Sharia law, uh, we can go down that path. I think that you... Okay, let me ask you a question. Even what's more embarrassed than you are already by trying to justify the unjustifiable. What's the punishment for rape in Islam? Tell me. Mr. Sharia expert, yeah? What's the punishment for rape in Islam? Well, that's the real <laughs> fundamental well, problem, that's... isn't it? Well, right? Is that there are as many interpretations of Sharia as there are Muslims. No, no, no. Uh, so I, I, I can give you any answer that I want. And I can answer, I can answer, uh, admittedly, interpretations vary, but uh, in some countries, it's a hundred lashes if you get raped. Because you committed adultery. And if you happen to be 14 years old and can't withstand that much damage, then you will be killed in the process, just like that girl was, who was raped a few weeks ago. Okay. Well, let me see. Oh, the woman in the United um, Arab Emirates who was, what was it? She was raped, and when she reported it, she was put in jail for six months. Well, exactly. Javier, listen. And then she's not allowed to leave if nobody comes to get her. We okay, have the let's, same Hamza, let's Hamza attempt to respond to these points. The reason I pull this question because it actually shows we make value judgments on a tradition and we have absolutely no knowledge of it. We look at sociological circumstance and not the intellectual tradition. For instance, when I went to the World Atheist Convention, majority of the people who attended used to, were thinking that a woman needs full witnesses when she gets raped and she would get stoned and lashed. That has nothing to do with the Sharia. Uh, that's no, that is not true. Firstly, none of us here have ever said that it requires four witnesses. I didn't say it was you. And if you, are, if you are doubting for what... I'm sorry, please. If you are doubting for one moment... Sorry, Hamza, please. If you are doubting for one moment that the Sharia courts, that after hearing a case in relation to rape or adultery, do not pass a sentence of death by stoning then I will provide links within a literally seconds. Do not deny that. You can't. Oh, listen and you to can't me. even justify it. If I went on it. the web, if I went on the web to discuss, for example, you know, atheist views on particular things, I would oh, see how Sorry, don't you not it. Are you no? When you read a book, challenge me. Read a book. Do read not challenge me on this one. <laughs> Are you suggesting I cannot within a few seconds get a link? from a reputable source that will show that a Sharia court has imposed the death penalty by stoning for homosexuality, adultery, or blasphemy. Are you really going to challenge me? Because I'm going to embarrass you if you do. That, that's not the topic. The topic's about yes, rape. Yes, that is the topic. No, it's not. The topic's about rape. What are you talking about? We were discussing, do you know the punishment for rape? And then my well, point the man was, or the woman? Which one? Both. You really need right. to calm down. You really need to calm down and take a chill pill, yeah? Have another cigarette. Just listen to okay, me for tell, one tell, second. Tell, don't leave us for in one suspense. Second, let me finish. Let me finish. So what I'm saying is, at the Atheist Convention, especially when it emanates from the mouth of Miriam Namazi, she, they will talk about outdated cliches with regards to the Sharia. I don't care what a Sharia court says. I go to the intellectual tradition. Let's read a book, an academic book from a non-Muslim written in Cambridge. So you avoid reality. No, no. But that's right, I'm going to get a link for you. You know what? You, that's the biggest logical fallacy I've heard today. 
The biggest logical fallacy. So the just social- out of interest, um, was Muhammad an intellectual Muslim? Let, let, let me just finish. Well, don't, 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 don't ignore that. Let's, let's not get sidetracked. Let, him finish let, let me just hurt. My point is this. The sociological output of a particular society doesn't really define its intellectual tradition. I don't care how many links you give me. I could give you links about rape in this society. Does it mean everyone's a rapist in Britain? Of course not. That's, think about what you're doing. It's, just, it's childish. Nor did it's, we it's, imply anything yes, like that. But that's why I didn't say you. I said the people, the people I, I said spoke we. to. People right, I spoke well, to at the World Atheist Convention, the majority of them had this view. Now, my point, if you want to learn about the Sharia, we must pick up at least a textbook on the Sharia written by a reputable source, not a Muslim and non-Muslim, from a British or American or English-speaking institution. So when we do read, we won't always rely on sociological things. For example, what some man did in Pakistan or what some unjust, duplicit government that, frankly, the Muslims don't want to be part of anymore, as we can see from the Arab Spring Rising. The point is, let's read and educate ourselves. And that's my point is, when it comes to rape, it's not under adultery. Whoa. She doesn't, she Whoa. doesn't have to bring Stop. four witnesses. Stop. Does, no, I'm going to finish. Sorry, I have to finish this point. She doesn't have to bring four witnesses. It goes under the... the said that she does. Let him finish. I know Let that. I'm missing the point. Um, she, 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 her, her witness is fine. DNA testing is fine. And it goes under the crime of unlawful warfare or um, called hiraba in Arabic. Yeah, And it's a different category of punishment. The reason I brought this up is not to accuse you, it's to accuse, not even accuse, it's to say that there are outdated cliches with regards to the Sharia. And, and even yourself, what you've just said, you've said, proof against me is a link of some Sharia court. That's not proof against me, that's proof against your analytical skills because you haven't picked up a book on Sharia law. Uh, no, no, it's uh, because uh, there's two links. The, the interpretation, the interpretation reflected law? in the link that GPR would drop would make all the same arguments that you're making and claim that their intellectual tradition or whatever you want to call it is better than yours. So it's like but, fighting with action figures. No, saying, oh, and, not, and, and it's worse than that because no, by not. observation, by observation, this is how Sharia law is practiced. Right. That is actually a legal system that is extant now. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. That's that's oh, why right. uh, links. This, yeah, you could say as many links you want. Look, the point is this. The majority look, I, uh, look, so, saying that you can come up with a different interpretation of Sharia is essentially a completely irrelevant red herring. I what we are I interested that. what we are interested in is how is Sharia law practiced um, today? Well, I would agree with you. It's published. It's, it's practiced unjustly. There's no transparency. There's so, no yeah, but yeah, but I mean, you say that you have an intellectual interpretation. They say they have an intellectual interpretation, but theirs is the one that is implemented. Yeah, I know, and that's and that's, why, and that's why we associate Sharia law with the implementation of Sharia law. Let me give an example. Because that's how it's implemented. In Pakistan, there was a village. And when the baby came from an adulterous mother, they stoned the baby. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? We live in dark times, people. Yes, it's and they did you that because... You the Muslim world lives in dark times. Yeah, well... We, yes, we, in the United uh, States, they've never stoned a baby. Even, even in the highly... The wait, wait, please. But we've gas we gasped have. We do the have the death penalty. Hey, in Iraq, so that's hold on. We do have the death penalty in the United States in the highly religious areas, and we have discovered that the death penalty is not a deterrent because we also have the most murders and the most violent crimes in the most religious areas. Conversely, so the death penalty does not serve as a deterrent, and it only exists in areas where they are way too religious to begin with. In more secular communities, you don't have that level of violent crime. In more secular communities, you are more reasonable. They don't That's do the death at penalty all. at all. There's more all. gun and knife crime in the West than anywhere else in the world. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, they are because the United There's States more is the most religious. The the, yes, about. because the violence. United States is the most religious of all the first world countries. So, of course, we have the highest crime rate. Get the correlation? No, I don't get the correlation. It's a secular society. It's a soft no, secular society. No, unfortunately, it isn't any longer. But it's a, a secular, it's a secular government, but not a very secular society compared to other developed nations, compared to like Japan or Norway or someplace like that. I mean, we in are. Japan, you can walk down some of the darkest streets in some of the biggest cities in the dead of the night, and you're perfectly safe. May I also, yeah. just, may I also just 